This lesson introduces sequences and how to access them using indexing. A sequence is the type of thing that represents a finite, ordered collection of things indexed by non-negative integers. For example, here is a list that contains three strings representing colors. Strings themselves are sequences containing characters, as in this one that contains C, H, E, C, K, and so forth. Tuples are another kind of sequence. We'll talk more about them later. There are also types in Python for unordered collections. Sequences are powerful because they let you refer to an entire collection, as well as the items in the collection, using a single name. For example, here the variable colors refers to a collection of three strings that represent colors. You can still get to the items of the collection by indexing, like this. Colors, open bracket, zero, close bracket, refers to the beginning item of the sequence, here the string red. Colors one refers to the next item of the sequence, here the string white. And colors two refers to the item after that, here the string blue. The notation is the sequence name, here colors, followed by an open square bracket symbol, followed by a non-negative integer called the index that specifies the item of the sequence which is being referenced, followed by a closed square bracket symbol. Note that indexing starts at zero, not one. It works that way for historical reasons that go back to the underlying hardware. Again, the number in the square brackets is called the index and the things in the sequence are called the items, or equivalently, the elements of the sequence. We use the words items and elements interchangeably. We've seen that sequences allow you to refer to the entire sequence by using the name of the sequence, and also to items in the sequence by using the square bracket notation for indexing. When we add the power of loops, something really cool happens. For example, Suppose we want to make a zeligraphic circle loop, or we use the word iterate, through a sequence of colors, like this. We would start by constructing a ZG circle in the usual way. We would also have a list or other sequence of colors, as here. We would then set the fill of the circle to color zero, using the square bracket notation that we have seen. Here, that makes the circle turn red. We then set the fill of the circle to color 1, again, using the square bracket notation. Here, that makes the circle turn white. We then set the fill of the circle to color 2, once again, using the square bracket notation. Here, that makes the circle turn blue, and so forth. But I hope that you see that this approach, writing one line for every color in the list is silly. Instead, we want a loop. So, let's solve the problem again, this time using a loop. In the upper right, we have the code that we just wrote. Doing it with a loop, we construct a ZG circle as before. We make a list of colors as before. But instead of a long list of set fills, we make a single loop, using a for statement as usual. The loop should go as many times as we have colors in the list. Let's come back to that shortly. Inside the loop, we have a single statement that is very similar to the set fills that we had in our previous attempt. Now, the question is, what do we want inside the square brackets? Pause for a moment to think about this key question. The first time through the loop, we want a zero inside the square brackets. The next time through the loop, we want a one inside the square brackets. The next time after that through the loop, we want a two inside the square brackets, and so forth. Decide for yourself, what variable do we already have in the code that is going 0, 1, 2, etc. as we iterate through the loop. Pause the video now and decide for yourself, again, what variable do we already have in the code that is going 0, 1, 
2, etc. as we iterate through the loop. Once again, what variable do we already have in the code that is going 0, 1, 2, etc. as we iterate through the loop? I hope you saw that that variable is our for loop variable, k. That is, our code contains the expression colors bracket k inside the loop. Now, be absolutely sure that you understand the use of the index k in this example. It is not a magic symbol. It is just an ordinary variable that goes 0, 1, 2, and so forth per the range statement. It just so happens that that is exactly what we want to refer to the items in the sequence, one after the other. By the way, do you see now why the range statement is defined to start at zero? Speaking of that range statement, let's return to it. We want the loop to go as many times as there are items in the list. There is a special function called len, L-E-N, that gives the length of a sequence, that is, the number of items in the sequence. So that's what we want in our range statement. Finally, I'll comment that there is an alternative notation that you can use to iterate through a sequence when you don't need the indices. But you can always use the form with the range expression, as shown on the left, so I'll always use that form. To summarize, here is an example that combines the pattern of iterating through a sequence with the summing pattern. This example will be a function that returns the sum of the numbers in the sequence that it is given. For example, if the sequence is the one shown here, then the function would add 8 plus 13, getting 21, then add 7 in to get 28, then add in 5 to get 33, and return that value, 33. Here is the code. The sum all function here takes a sequence as its parameter. So it is not surprising that the variable name sequence appears in the body of the function. The actual sequence will be whatever sequence is passed to the function. For example, the four element sequence shown to the right. We are summing up numbers in this problem, so as usual, we initialize a variable that I have chosen to call total to zero. Now we loop or iterate through the sequence. Note the pattern. We use a for loop with range expression that uses the len function applied to the sequence of interest. Inside the loop, we see the usual summing pattern. Total becomes what it was plus something. Here, the something brings in the iterating through a sequence pattern. We put the sequence name with the loop variable, here k, inside the square brackets. This makes our summing add up sequence 0 the first time through the loop, then sequence 1, then sequence 2, and so forth until all items in the sequence have been accumulated into the total. The function ends by returning its computed value as expected.